Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching electromagnetics at Idaho State University. In this video, we're going to be covering a problem that's very similar to problem 4.38 in the ULAB textbook. Now, this problem gives us a electric field that is in spherical coordinates, so we can see that this is in spherical coordinates because of that big R, right? So we are given an electric field, it's in spherical coordinates, and then we're asked to find the potential at point A with respect to point B in two different cases where the points are given on the z-axis. And so this, you know, that might be cylindrical, but we're going to say that these are Cartesian points. So in this problem, what we need to do is we need to determine uh, should we stay in spherical coordinates or Cartesian coordinates, and um, or how do we convert? So what are the pitfalls between those two? And then we also need to uh, apply some formulas that allow us to see the potential between point A with respect to point B. So mathematically, when we're, set, we're told, okay, find the potential between uh, point A with respect to point B, you might see one of these two equations. And so if we were to say the voltage potential uh, at point two with respect to point one, this is at point, this is the potential V2 at point P2, with respect to the voltage at uh, point P1. So the voltage 1 at point P1 is equal to this uh, path integral where we integrate the electric field dot with a differential length. So we integrate little bits of the electric field up as they are pointed in the same direction of a differential length. And we add up all those little bits as we go from point 1 to point 2. And we could also rewrite this similar notation to what we see in this problem with A with respect to B, where we have voltage A with respect to voltage B. And voltage B is from point B is potential at point B, whereas A is potential at point A. Now, in this problem, we can see when we're applying this formula that you need to know a field, and you also need to know a differential length. Now our field is given here, and again our field is in the spherical coordinates, so we're going, if we use this field as is, our DL would be in spherical. However, if we converted this, we might, we might convert it and then our DL would be better looked at in Cartesian coordinates. So we're going to look at which one of these might be better approach for us. So looking at DL, we can see uh, on, on our axis here that we're looking at the uh, z-axis and we have our two points. So we have our point 2 and our point 4. Now in this problem, right, we can see that um, the electric potential of A with respect to B, where A is at point 4. So I'm going to label that here. So this is our point A. And this is our point B. Now we need to choose a DL. And so our DL is going to be some path that goes from B to A. Okay, so just like in here, right, this is some path that goes from B to A. So if we were to find a path that goes from B to A, it's on DL, we can see that this path, if our point R here would be best given as a path that is in the z hat direction. And so if we are in Cartesian coordinates, then our DL would be best given as z hat dz. And if we were to do this in spherical coordinates, it actually appears that it would be quite easy as well. And we could say that this is the, the center, and this would be a path r hat dr. Now, this, this would work uh, quite well for either one. And let's see how to pro just do this by solving it in the Cartesian coordinates, uh, because it looks like the path is, is quite easily seen along here. And so we're going to just convert our electric field that we're given. We're going to convert this into the Cartesian coordinates for this case. So to do that, we can see that we're going to choose two cases. 
one is when z is greater than or equal to zero and one when z is less than zero so when it's greater than zero we can convert this to here and when it's less than zero right this will be minus 18 z hat all right so this is actually not too hard to convert to cartesian coordinates and the reason that we have to add in this minus sign is right we can see that the spherical version <clears throat> the r hat is pointed away from the this point uh, everywhere so we're going to add in this minus sign so that we uh, can convert this this electric field into the cartesian coordinates all right so now we have two things and we should be able to solve this we have an electric field that is given in cartesian coordinates and we've selected a dl here that's also in cartesian coordinates so let's put those two things together and we have our potential a b <clears throat> where point B is 2 and point A is 4 and our electric field is this now we're taking a dot product and our path goes from B to a and it's z hat dz when we take the dot product right this is going to give us a scalar result and performing this integral we arrive at this now the next step right is to uh, perform this evaluation now make sure we don't get tricked because we do have this minus sign and we can simplify this Oops a little bit more oh oops sorry this is a negative so when we get to here this negative cancels out with this one i apologize for that i was the one who got tricked now we can see that we could simplify this to nine halves minus 18 halves which is equal to minus nine halves or minus 4.5 is equal to our voltage at a with respect to b okay so the first one so far so good we're able to uh, convert from the spherical coordinates to the cartesian coordinates we were able to find the potential at point a with respect to point b and we were able to find that differential length in the dz now part b is going to end up being quite a bit more tricky because we need to find the potential at a with respect to b where a is at positive 2 and b is at minus 4 and so i will cover that in the next video